Um, so thanks, everybody. Um, I um, am from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a psychologist by training, PhD psychologist, and a serial entrepreneur. And years ago, after I ran a, a software company that I sold, I let my license go. Everybody was horrified, but I never wanted to go sit back in a little room with people and listen to their problems. But now, um, after selling the software company, I randomly ended up being interested in, well, I had some real estate I was selling, found WordPress, and then I'd be sitting in a coffee shop talking to my friends who were losing their jobs in the recession about uh, how to get a website and so forth. And I became an accidental WordPress, um, and now I have an agency, WordPress designer, and now I have an agency. And that was about 10 years ago. So um, I have new tricks in Atlanta. We have, there's four of us that work together. And this is not showing. Let me look. And I, back in the day, I was desperate for other people that did WordPress. I mean, I didn't know anybody online, but not a real person. And I found people, four developer types in Atlanta, meeting in a coffee shop across town. And I drive all the way across there in Atlanta. It was an hour. And you couldn't hear anything they were saying. It was so frustrating. You couldn't stick to the topic or hear anything. And I was like, oh my god, it was like one of those, those existential you know, horror stories. So I'd go back and I'd be all mad. And then what I realized is maybe they need some help because I have an event space. And so I asked, and by golly, they did. And we started a, a meetup in my house. And we'd have 60 people a month before we would fill up and couldn't do it anymore. So what I realized is I kind of learned, I was able to curate my education by finding the topics for the meetup group back in the day. And then I had all these friendships with these designers and developers who um, were amazing, who helped me through some of those rough times that you get when you're when you're learning to be a WordPress designer, developer, or freelancer. So here's the, um, the thing that I found is that the conscious competence, you, there's a place where, where you are unconsciously incompetent. And that's that first website you do and you think you're really good. I was gonna submit mine to the WordPress showcase. And then somebody told me what the criteria were and said, I don't think you're quite ready for that. I was like shocked. But then, you know, the th number two is where you're, you're quickly doing them for other people, find that it's a lot harder than you thought it was. And you're consciously incompetent. And how many people have been there or are, on there, are there? Yeah, you know what I mean? Three o'clock in the morning, you know, $3 an hour because you didn't price something right whatever, you didn't know what you're doing, you're, gonna, you're just trying to learn. And then what I realized from, once I did the meetup, then Matt Mullenweg asked me to, me and Russell Fair, to run the Atlanta, to start the Atlanta WordCamp. And I'm like, why us, we're busy, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, oh, I, we did it. And it's like one of those things, glad I did it. Even Matt even came to the first, for our first war camp. He's been at my house and he gave me his, his American Express card to carry around for the weekend. You know, so weird. But, and I was just like some gal in a diner. I mean, I didn't, you know, I started out not as, well, and so many people who are WordPress designers and developers didn't, didn't start out this way. So you get to this place where you know what you, you don't know what you don't know, but you know you don't know it. And then to get to, well, way up to conscious, unconscious competence, that's a real stretch. But let's just say getting to a place where you're doing pretty darn good work and you're really you know, doing well with your business, that's a stretch and there's not a great way to learn it. If you go to meetups and word camps, you hear this and this and this and oh, use this theme and that theme and do, and people are like, and the beginners don't know what they're doing. And it's hard because there's, if you were learning the violin, you would take violin lessons. And you would get a mentor, a teacher. There's, you know, tennis pro. You'd be a, you, you know what you would do. Not so much with WordPress. So that's how um, 
So what I decided to do over the years, I, I was still doing trainings and um, uh, at, at work camps and would, would do user experience talks and take uh, URLs from the audience about what they were doing, you know, showing them and, and having the audience help me critique the sites. They were terrible, terrible. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'd have a line out the door in the happiness room afterwards, you know, <laughs> help me, da, da, da. I'm like, I'd feel the weight of the world of all these aspiring web designers who were struggling um, in one way or the other. And one of the big, well, so I ended up making a course called the <laughs> WordPress Web Designer Mastery Course. It's not just for web designers, anybody that's doing freelancing, but w we heard a freelancing talk this morning. But before you can be a freelancer, you actually have to be competent. I saw on Troy Dean's WP Elevation, some fellow wrote in on his, answer, his question thing, his forum, well, how can I price my uh, discovery session for $4,000 if I don't really know what I'm doing? And that is an issue. So this talk is on pricing websites. Um, it's one of the things that I developed for the course that I teach. Um, the course that I teach covers seven core competency areas to give you a foundation and what you didn't know you didn't know so that you can keep learning it. And so I had, a, had to find a way to help my students um, learn to price the websites. So I thought, well, how am I doing it? And what I'm gonna talk about is the system that I use, but I didn't have a specific way to come up with the price. So I made the website cost estimator, which I'm gonna show you how that works in just a few minutes, and the process that leads up to it. Um, and in doing the website cost estimator, it was so much fun doing it for myself. I mean, doing it, I did it with a couple of people and I, now I, it's something that I do in my practice. So you know how important um, pricing is. Um, one of my friend's experience with one of his first websites is forgetting to ask how many products they wanted him to input. <laughs> It's like 435 was the answer that he failed to find out at the beginning. I mean, you do, you know, when you're new, I think you make every mistake, but you think, I'm never gonna make this mistake again, and then you turn around and make a different one. And so something else that sinks you, right? So, you know, it's a tricky issue. Everybody goes, oh, because we know how important it is to get that right, so we're not like chasing after people's scope cre increase and so forth. So this little process that I've come up with, there's no real right answer. So I'm gonna tell you what I do. And it really, how you do it is based on the type and size business that you have and the size of the companies and projects you're working on. What I'm gonna show you probably isn't, well, isn't how I do it for our big enterprise clients, but it kind of is. So this, works, this particular process was designed for freelancers and agencies with projects more for small businesses with, without like maybe under three decision makers. So in order to have a thriving career, you really have to get this right, accurate, be able to accurately price a fair price for you and your client. And in order to do that, you have to gain the trust and confidence of that client prospect and um, you know in order to win their their business and so one of the first things I do is um, well the first thing I recommend is that there's some homework you have to do so somebody this morning asked how many people really have a good effective website when I say that I mean one that really does I say if you can sell in person you can sell online as long as everything you do and say and are, you bottle that and you put it on your website. How many people have a website like that? Come on, anybody? Kind of. Well, it, how are you going to price a website, like get a good price for a website if you don't have an effective website? 
And if you don't have a, an effective website, is that because you're putting yourself last or you're just selling to friends and family? That's going to run out soon. Or is it because you don't know how to make an effective website? Or is it all of the above? So that's step one is really figuring out who are your clients, what range of services do you provide, how can you help solve their problem, what makes you good, why are you an expert that they can trust, what is your niche, what, is, what makes you special from somebody down the street. Our little niche is we have four people. We're not just a guy in a diner in a Starbucks who doesn't return their calls, who doesn't do what they say they're going to do, who didn't know that you were supposed to redirect all the 30, you know, 301 redirects of all their e-commerce pages and they lose $20,000 the first minute that it launches. You know, so we're not that person and people who have gone to that person don't want to go to a person anymore, but they don't want to go to an agency either. They want a small shop they can count on people. So that's our niche. I know that, and our website reflects in subtle ways, it answers those things about our business. So people go, oh, just who I was looking for. Our people, you know, so that's our niche. You don't have to only, if you have a niche, only do dentists or only do, you know, a niche can be, you know, within, um, across types of businesses, but you need to know who you want, who you work with, what do you tell people when you meet them to make them want to work with you? So, and getting your, that's your good website up. Then the next thing is, don't put a big old form on your site. You want to get them on the phone. You want them to call you. You want to start the relationship right away. Um, so the, I offer a free phone call. And at, I don't know if I have this on the website right now, but we have a Calendly thing, we had a Calendly thing on our old website where they could schedule either a 10 minute call or an hour talk it out session. The hour talk it out session is $150. The 10 minute call starts out 10 minutes, but if I think they're a hot lead, it's gonna go to 20 minutes because what I'm doing on that call is finding out what their problems are, what they've been dealing with, what they need, and then having a kind of letting them know I, I understand them and I have a solution, you know, that they can, they're in good hands from what we talk about. Um, they kind of know, oh, I want more of this. So then they're ready to sign up for it and they say, well, what's the next step? I say, well, but the next step of anybody we work with, we do a talk it out session and that's $150. And I have them come to my office because I have a great office and it reinforces our brand. So if you don't have a great office, you might not want to, them to come to your office and just go to their office. But if you're really busy, you could be in Atlanta, you could be spending hours going, <laughs> you know, here, there, and the other place. And people, you know, there's a thing in psychology where we think that if we do something nice for someone, then they're going to like us more. Doesn't work that way. If they do something nice for us, they like you better. So getting in the car, driving to my office, they've already got skin in the game, paying $150. When they schedule the appointment through Calendly and pay, their, pay the fee, they've got skin in the game. They come to my office, it's a cool place, and you know already they're like, oh, so you've got to find your own secret sauce. That's ours. But then um, uh, it's um, about the paid consultation. Like, what do you do? So you've seen people, you've heard stories, and I hope you don't do this, but there's some people that would talk to someone who was a prospective client and, and you know, you're nervous, you don't know what to ask them, you feel like you're prying. No, no, don't feel that way. But when you feel that way, they revert to, well, show me three sites that you like. Oh, okay, I can build one, I can build one like that for you. Or you have somebody that already has a preconceived notion of, 
like a, a theme that they wanted to try or some snazzy design and they're going to give that to the person whether that's right for them or not you know so the whole point of this paid consultation is to really dive into their business what pro what services and products are, are, are their main products what who are their customers how how do they talk to them where do they find them you know you just want to know everything about this business because you're I'm already designing the home page in my head. You know, how would I depict that, you know, how would I speak to their clients? Because when people talk about that home page, they're not, and it's telling the client story, it's not really the client, it's their, it's telling the story about how our clients help their clients. And it's speaking to their clients, not to about them. You know, it's not the website of, well, we do this and we do this and like look at us it's we know you have a problem here's how here's what we do you can trust us without saying those words so i'm already asking questions to try to find out how are we going to streamline that front page and somebody mentioned this morning the grant story brand by donald miller hugely important go to its website get his book that adds at least $1,500 to every proposal we do. Because when I start talking about it, and I say that's the difference between like a $6,000, $8,000 website and a three dollars or $4,000 website, they want, this, they want that. So that's, that's a great resource because it'll tell you how to talk to the client so that they see you as really different than anybody else they've been talking to because most people aren't are talking about how to really take your story and you know get it on the website it's uh, building, something something brand story brand building a story brand building a story brand by Donald Miller and his website great marketing so um, it's I, I've been to I went to one of his in-person uh, workshops on this on story brand and it's it, even though I was kind of doing that before it gives you a language to talk about it that is you know clients the pers perspective clients love so you're that's what you're going to do in this paid consultation and I tell people ahead of time it, I'm not just going to ask you you know it's not just going to be uh, me asking you questions that I'd need to know to price your website you know it's not just going to be like that it's going to be we're really going to dive into your web your business and come up with some ideas about your business and what you're going to need and, and you can take that and use that with anybody this information I'm going to teach them about what new what websites look like and act how they are today because most people have weird ideas and you know so you have to it's some training so you know you're demonstrating your expertise you know you want to make recommendations but don't <laughs> sign the site beforehand and show it to them um, that's not a good thing either so you know then let them know you do what you say you say what you you say what you do you do what you say you return your phone call let them know how you work make them feel safe they need to know you're going to be responsive to them and you are building trust how do you do the payments um, how long is it going to take to make the website I always get this I say well how long is it going to take you to get back to me on all of the stuff that we're going to do so then the moment if you've done that well the moment of truth arrives and they say oh yeah yeah well how much is this going to cost well then i just <laughs> this is the website cost estimator and um let's see i'm gonna see if i can head over here to firefox whoops no sorry um Well, you, wouldn't you know I had it set up so I could just uh, click on it and now it's not at all jeez. Ah, I never use this laptop 
Okay, so um, my, my assistant. Um, I'm just trying to get to, um, to the get out of PowerPoint without closing it completely. Oh well, now I've really gone into. No, 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 you're okay. Okay, so oh, that's in PowerPoint. We need to get out of it. Okay, there you go. Is that going to do it? Yes. Thank you. Let's see if I can get to. Oh, good. Okay, here we go. Here it is. Hiding under everything. Okay, so this is a web designer mastery course, and it's got 10 modules covering all the seven core competencies of a, of a website pro. And then we have a session on um, five steps to pricing websites like a pro, a, module, um, a lesson. And down here, I have a, it's, uh, here's the website cost estimator. I'm going to make it bigger so you can see better. So let's just pretend like we're going through this. So I say, oh, well, let's do the, let's just whip out the website cost estimator. And I do this with the client. And I say, my glasses on, um, well, what is this? Is this a redesign? You know, we decide that. This is a little trick question because if I know, if I want to keep the price down, even if it's, you know, one of these or another, I can pick one depending on what I think that the price is going to be later. But um, say it's a new website for a new business. How many decision makers are going to be involved? Because new, all of a sudden that's 1,000. Oh, one person. Doesn't add anything. Actually, even, um, yeah, one person doesn't add anything. And then um, what style of, oh, and maybe they have two to three opinionated people. But at least we go through that right then and they say, well, I have a couple of other people, but they're not opinionated. Or at least we've broken the ice so that we can talk about that later if I've got to go through everything and people are giving me um, corrections and revisions three times. So, um, so we've got a thousand. What style, I love this question, what style of collaborator will you be? Cool, I'll collaborate with you and we'll like, work together, trust your judgment. Um, it doesn't add anything. Reluctant, I have to pull everything out of you. I'm gonna be waiting for things and, or do, having to do them for you because you don't do them. Uh, that adds 500. Involved, you know, they have a, an idea about it, but they'll know it when they see it. That's bad. Exacting, I have champagne taste. I want the site exactly like I want it. And, um, a lot of times they'll say, well, uh, you know, I'm the director of a nonprofit, and so, you know, I really do have champagne taste, but, um, you know, I have to be careful and, you know, we're on a budget, so I'm gonna, not going to put that. Then by the end of it, uh, be someplace like towards the end, she'll say, I can tell the light, the wheels have been turning. She says, you know that question about the champagne taste? I said, yeah, you got to go back and select it. And bingo, $2,000 more on the contract. But they know they're that person, right? So, so say, let's just say they're, they're um, reluctant. Let's just add that. Logo and branding. You know, so here, you know, do they have it already? Or they're going to need a refresh? Or they're going to need a whole new logo and branding package? And you can, you know, fill in your own prices, um, but let's just say that they need a refresh of their logo. That's going to add another thousand. Will the client provide all the images? Well, that's a trick question because they never provide all the images. So, um, but it gives them some, you know, I didn't want to just like assume, give them a chance to say they're not going to really do that. And then, okay, what do they need? Well, they're going to need an epic hero image. They're, you know, what do they need help with? They're going to need some additional images on the site, and we're going to help choose them. Um, they'll need a recommendation for headshots or something. That didn't add anything to it. My <laughs> recommendations are free. Um, mobile site requirements. 
Um, if, 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 if we don't have to do a lot of custom mobile site CSS to have their site display right, then it's zero. If they're a restaurant or something and the mobile site has to be different, you know, has to have a bunch of, have, have the, the directions and the phone, you know, all the stuff at the top, then we're going to be doing some CSS on a mobile display and that's going to be an extra $750. Then we get to the number of pages. Well, how many pages? Well, this is about typical. So I'm going to do that. But you see more than 16 pages or a bigger team. That's where I go into, like, you know, this doesn't really work for that. And we have a different process. Homepage design requirements. Da da da. Homepage is simple and straightforward, zero. Homepage design doesn't require much strategy. We're just making pretty, 350. If we're going to make it effective with the brand story, we're going to add $1,500 to the price of the website. Copywriting. We'll provide designer finished copy for each page. Well, how likely is that? <laughs> it's not. We'll use our copy from our existing, existing website. We'll need help with copywriting. So even if they say we'll use co copy, I don't let them get away with that because <laughs> they're always going to need edits. But they'll never give it to you. It'll, it'll still need editing. So say they're going to use the copy. So they get to this drop down no matter what they choose. So we're going to give them a minor edits throughout the, um, we're going to, oh, you know, they need a whole new about page because their about page is written in third person. It's really horrible. They've got their resume on the side, you know, no. Um, and so we kind of go through here. Well, now we're getting up to 6,600 something or other. Uh, but you can kind of keep going. You can see, oh, do they need an opt-in offer? Oh, well, you know, what else do they need? But they're getting the idea that what they ask for is makes a difference in the price. You just didn't go out to the parking lot and see that they're driving a Lexus and charge more or something. Um, so uh, what else do they need? A blog doesn't add anything. One contact form doesn't add anything. But if they need additional forms, you know, here's another trick area. They say, oh, they're just one. And then they come back to you and say they have a, you know, 75 question HIPAA compliant form that they forgot to tell you about. Oh, that's extra. And so even if they do come back with that later, you're like, remember, we only priced out one form. Yeah, yeah, we did. Or I've had somebody who, uh, who said that it was a starter site. He started a catheter company and um, he, he was going to have people, they don't buy them, but they uh, choose the, uh, somehow, whatever. He, it's going to be, he's got all these catheter products. Well, all the, they have to be displayed. It was easy enough to just put them on um, WooCommerce just to organize the pages, but he wasn't going to have actual prices and so forth because this was the starter site. But he gets into our discovery meeting and he forgets and he starts going, I'm like, remember this was the starter site and that's going to be in phase two. He said, oh yeah. <laughs> um, so, but it, it allows you to go back because you've talked about everything. Um, additional forms, event calendars. People, you know, you think, of course they should know they have events. <laughs> they forget. And we forget to ask. Photo galleries, opt-in forms. I used to automatically add an email newsletter sign up and start a MailChimp account for clients until I realized how many of those forms are sitting there never having been used. I'm like, now I have them pay extra and tell me they're going to do it or they want it at least. So, you know, it can go up to more, but this would be a very typical thing, you know, for a, a simple website that really wanted to be effective and we do the brand story and we, you know, read about the brand story and you'll see what I mean. It, it really takes the person down a path where a particular client understands that, that this person has or this website has exactly what they want. They, they are empathetic. They're experts. I know I can get my needs met. Oh, here's a little plan. 
a free phone call, talk it out session, discovery meeting, launch, you know? It's like give them a plan on the home page. Don't put all of your services on the home page. All the home page does is that you want them to be connected enough to you for your main money making product that they want to know more. If you've got everything in the kitchen sink, it'll be like stressing their brains and they'll like leave. So hit them with your best shot and then put all the other things you do on, a, on, on your services page and go into detail about those later. But don't give them everything at once. Um, and so 6,650, they say, oh, okay, that sounds good because they help do it. Or they say, oh, it's a little more than I wanted to spend. And I say, well, what can we take out? <laughs> and then they don't want to take anything out. Um, or they take something out and we have to be really careful. Uh, okay, maybe we're not going to refresh their branding or, you know, which I hate. I would do it anyway because I, I'm an artist. Um, <laughs> I'll tell them. Uh, but we, we talk about it. If they pick champagne taste, they get rid of champagne taste. And I warn them, you got to be, you know, I'm going to hold you to the line that you can't have a billion, you know, it's not going to take us twice as long as we thought it was. And they're, they're like, okay, that sounds great. And so then at that point, they've already, hello, they've already decided to work with you and you've got a price. It's not a mystery. You're not like fretting over doing the proposal. Oh my God, I've got to do this proposal. And what the hell am I going to charge, <laughs> charge them for it? How am I going to justify this? You've already done that sitting with them and voila, you have a new client. Ta da So that's pricing websites like a pro. Um, let me, I see. Okay, well that's good. Um, now I've got to find my, how to do this again. Um, well, I'm just going to put. Uh, okay. So um, if you text the word, well, it's the phrase, WordPress Pro, all caps, to 66866, you can give me your email in that little transaction, and you'll get my weekly blog post tips and so forth, but you'll also get the pricing websites like a Pro PDF that goes over the whole system, and a PDF version and a Word version so that you can customize it for your own self of the Web Designer Mastery course. Um, we'll be sending you some other emails, and if you want the automated version, it's, a, it's built with Gravity Forms, and we give you a JSON file that you can use, and you can customize it, you can do whatever. Now, you can take those questions and make your own Gravity Form out of it, but all those conditional logic, you might as well spend $47 and get it from us. It, yeah, so, so you'll be getting information about that, but you'll get the whole pricing websites like a pro and all the questions so that you can fix it for your own. You know, I had a client, one, or one of my students in the class calls me after our first, the first round of the WordPress website mastery course, which is four months of online stuff with one, one coaching session a week, group co coaching session, and we have a great time. And people, their, their, their deliverable is they have to do their own friggin' effective website using all the all what we learn and you and then apply to speak in a word camp well i mean when somebody has done that they walk around like this it's amazing they go to the word camp and they've got their new business cards and their website all snazzed up and lo and behold they start to get more business it, it's amazing. We're just finishing up one, and there's so, these. I've got developers in it this time, and they're so funny because they don't know what makes it makes something look good. And I've had to to really put more emphasis on design concepts that I think everybody should know. Who knew that they didn't know to use the same colors, their their brand colors that they should use the hex codes throughout to have the right colors or line things up a certain way. But they've already started getting business. I love it. So um, you'll get the uh, 
you'll get that uh, pricing websites like a pro. You can sign up to, um, if you go to Web Design Mastery, newtricks.com, web-design-mastery, you can, at this point, you can fill out a form saying you're interested in finding out more about it. Um, but I'm really changing that, that I haven't changed it yet to have more of an application. So if you're interested, just pick up the phone and call me because you may or may not be the right person for the class. But we're doing another one starting in October. <coughs> and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Judy Knight. And you can follow Ollie the Sheepadoodle at Ollie underscore Sheepadoodle. Everybody's giving their dog stuff today. So, um, six month old Sheepadoodle puppy. So that's, um, that's the story. I'm sticking to it and open up for questions. I'm not going to throw the green thing because I'm a terrible person. I'm a terrible <laughs> tosser. And Thank you. Vanna. <laughs> So how does that sound to you? Are there, does anybody have questions or like certain things that are, yeah. We are designer developers. So um, we do everything. So if you are more of which one? I'm more of a developer and a designer. Yeah, so, so these guys in my course are more developers. And so I, I encourage both of them to seek out designers who don't want to mess with the technical aspect. So you make collaborations with designers who just want to turn it over to you. And I have to say, one of our people starts all the websites now. And I was admitting to somebody that I haven't actually started a website, like spun it up to begin with and put all the things on it. You know, I haven't done that in several years. And I'm like pretty, it's, it's, I'm pretty lazy about it. But I love that. And I, I also don't want to deal, deal with all the details anymore. So if they handle that, great. So you find some people, go to WordPress meetups, let them know, make your website reflect, hey, let me do the hard work. One of the guys, his website's called Lean On Me. And um, it's like, you can count on him, you know? Like I teach our students to, who are doing, who are freelancing, to have their own, ho to do the hosting and maintenance and tech support, to at least pay, have charge for it. And if they're not technical, they need to have, because the client's gonna call them because they did the website. They're going to call them, and they can do minor things or call the, uh, you know, if something's wrong with the website, call the host, and they know how to troubleshoot some things, but they have to have somebody. They have to have a person, a company, somebody for the things that are over their head. Be that person for them, you know, but it's so nice because sometimes people come to us and some designer has, like, created all of these pages and whatever, and they say, well, can you do this? I'm like, sure, we'll be happy to do it. And it's, mu it's so much easier, you know, and, except if you've got a designer that doesn't understand websites, and then you have to at least have that conversation. But yeah, go for it and specialize in that, or find a couple of designers that, you know, go out and start that up. Other questions? Uh-huh. This might be off now. Oh, there it's on. Uh, so how did you arrive at the prices for the individual components? I mean, roughly, I, did you debate among your partners? Is it just market experience? Is it hourly? I, I just threw some numbers on there, and I jiggled with them until I got it right. And, oh, you remind me. So after my course, this young woman who's a great designer, was doing great work, but had never priced a website more than about 3000 she calls me, she could, she's stuttering. So I just priced a website. I just used the website cost estimator with a, a client and it came to $97,000. And I thought, oh shit, what did I do? And I thought, no, no, Allison, there's no way it could come to that. She said, oh, $9,700. And I said, well, 
was your tongue hanging out in a meeting or what happened? She said, no, no, it wasn't because the client was so busy talking her into $7,500 that she didn't notice that Allison was like, ooh. <laughs> and it was, the big, it was the biggest website she'd ever priced. And her work is good, so she should be getting that much because she does really, goes into detail with the branding. I mean, we just, you know, we, she's a designer, I mean, you know, tried and true, so, so yeah. So you can fiddle around with those figures so that it comes out in the area that you're comfortable with. Hi. Um, once you've finished and launched a website, how do you price any changes or support after that? We have, um, we have a hosting and maintenance program. We used to let people, I used to say, you have your domain registration and you keep your hosting in your name. And it was something would happen to their website would go down. They'd be in, you know, Bermuda calling me saying their website's down. Their sec husbands, I'd say, but your password doesn't work. They'd say, well, my husband, I can't reset it because it's my husband's secretary's brother, sister, you know, whatever. Three days later, we get into, we get their password. And so I'm like, no. Plus they'd be having all these one-off weird hosts. And plus all the websites we build really need managed WordPress hosting, you know, to, you know, to get the best bang for the buck, you know, and caching and so forth. And so we, we have an account with Pressable and we put all of, we put our clients on there for hosting and our maintenance upgrades and um, updates and uh, backups. And we do a report that comes from Managed WP because we use Managed WP for our clients. We've got about 75 uh, sites on, on um, maintenance on, on this now. And one of my people, one of our people was the one that said, we should really start doing hosting. And I'm like, oh, but I don't want to be on the hook for it. And then I realized, we're already on the hook for it. And it's so much easier. And I thought, oh, they're never going to pay $99. Most of them do. They don't want to think about it. And it comes with three 30-minute uh, a month tech support calls. But we're pretty lenient with that because they're hardly ever make tech support calls. It's mostly, you know, something, something. You know, would you add a new this or upload my blog post? Or, so we do that. But we were doing it anyway for nothing for our clients. We make that non-negotiable. Which part? The, the yeah, if they don't host with us, then we're not maintaining their site. And so, you know, and they want us to, you know, most of them. Some people think they can do it themselves, but what I find usually is those are people that are hacked. Mm -hmm. Yes? So you were just saying that you would maintain most of your clients' tech, but do you find it difficult to, to talk them out of it? I mean, when you're using WordPress, which is all about content management and basically easy, so what we find is all of our clients think that they want to maintain their website, and like you said, most of them do not. And I tell them that. I just tell them, it's easy, but I don't know about you, but every time uh, Microsoft comes up with a Word update, how many times do I just go, not now, not now, not now? I mean, I'm terrible at it. So I'm like, if you can't even update your Microsoft, how are you going to go into your website? Because they're also not going there. They're not blogging. <sighs> terrible. <laughs> They're not doing those things. So if they were actively on their website, maybe they could do it. But then they also don't know, oh, by the way, maybe you'll, you might want to upload the Gutenberg Classic Editor plugin and activate it now so when it comes out, all of a sudden one day you didn't know it was going to happen, your site doesn't work. Or let us uh, make a mirror image of your site, and, and which we're doing for all of our clients, and seeing how, how it works with Gutenberg. But see, you know, it's like I said, those things come up all the time, and you won't know that. Are you charging for that? Yes. For the Gutenberg testing? Okay. Other questions? Yes. Well, we've got several of them right now. 
we've got a place in Tennessee called the Old Mill, and they look up their website now. It's, it's really bad. You would never know that they have two restaurants, uh, like five or six uh, stores, you know, a creamery, a country kitchen, a general, an active mill that runs and makes flour, grits and all this stuff. You never know that they have all of this there down the road from Dollywood. This is like the authentic Smoky Mountain. And so uh, on their current website and their current store is terrible. So, um, so just the, we've worked out something because their POS system. So I had them pay me $5,000 to do discovery about their site and make recommendations for what's involved. And this woman who runs the place, the owner, owner's daughters, it's family business, she worked with a lot of companies that say, oh, well, let's do a, a site audit or something, or, or you know, some sort of audit, and she'd never get anything. But, um, you know, so she was a little leery, but I had some trust built up with her, so. She was shocked with what I came up with because I really got in and looked at the back end. I looked at all her pages. I found out that she had 750 items in her store and 286 of them weren't even making $25 a profit a year. You know, and I, and I was able to kind of, you know, map out a strategy for changing the site. So part, they have a POS system that's with this company called Celerent that's uh, a private CMS. It doesn't have widgets and gadgets like Shopify or WooCommerce or something. You know, it doesn't play well with anything, but they have to use that. So I, I didn't price the store out. I just priced all of the, the marketing pages, the landing pages, made up, you know, I, I kind of mapped out exactly how we would do this, what would be involved. And that, that was about $45,000 to do just the, um, not the store. So my, I did the store design, and I'm consulting with the, that other company, and that's extra. So it'll probably end up being about seventy-five thousand dollars altogether. We've got about two minutes left. So maybe time for one more question. But just to show how how having a good website can work for you is that we got a call recently out of the blue and it's this woman who said she's been looking for a local company that wasn't a one person shop that wasn't a big agency she said you wouldn't believe the bad websites out there i said yeah i would and so she came over and met with us and she's the executive right hand person I, I, assistant isn't even the word for portman holdings which is one of the biggest did architectural and development companies in the world, and they designed half of Atlanta, if not more, all the, you know, a lot of the iconic buildings and so forth. And um, she loved us. We just got the job like a week ago. And I priced that at first at 50 something. And then she said, oh, well, he was expecting more like 38 or 40. And I said, oh, well, we can fix that. But I went and did a screaming frog analysis of what site or pages you have and when we were talking initially and just tossing some things out I didn't know you had like blah 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 that actually wasn't showing up on your website so if we stick to the number of pages and thing you know this size site when well, I'll just lower it but she was already like feeding me information so that I would get the contract because she trusted us but it all came from the website Yes. Uh, so you said that you're speaking about the old mill. What, um, what do you project your turnaround time for that, for that budget cycle? Well, they they need a they need a low they we didn't do we're not doing the branding package and they have been circling around not liking anything anybody's done for them. So she says so, since November. So I was holding off doing it. Finally, she said about a month ago. Just start the website. I said, but you don't have branding. Just do it anyway. I can't wait. I'm like, okay. So I made up my own little logo because I couldn't stand looking at theirs. And um, just pick the colors and the fonts. 
And then we had a meeting, and she, she, she thought I was going to show her wireframes, and I had already like four or five landing pages. All using their, I just go, I ask people to give me your underwear drawer, give me your Dropbox files, and let me go through them. And she said, oh my God, I could cry. You really captured what, what I was looking for, which wasn't rocket science. I mean, you know, she loved Magnolia, but they're country Magnolia. You know, it's, they're not Magnolia, but I knew what she was looking for. And, but we're going to probably launch it in sometime mid-November. It really doesn't take that long. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> with them, I designed the e-commerce site. How I did it was I put WooCommerce on our site, and I threw some products in there, and then and I, did, I customized the WooCommerce. I took screenshots. I put it into uh, Photoshop. I added a few things that I didn't want to, you know, get totally, you know, fix WooCommerce correctly. And, um, and they would look at the page, and they say, oh, of course, it, you know, going from where they are to what I'm doing. They had no changes. Um, but, uh, you know, it comes back to that champagne taste of me being willing to say, yeah, that's extra. You know, that's really outside of our scope. Um, or I can't, you know, I can change, like how I'm doing the landing pages is I call them, and plus we build them live. I don't do... I usually, I don't do wireframes. We build them with Beaver Builder or um, in the case of, of the, um, well, another architectural firm, uh, Visual Composer, because they already knew how to use Visual Composer. So we just, we can design them faster than we could do a wireframe. And people can't read wireframes anyway. People can't read blueprints. So it really, you know, you end up doing more and more if they can't see the end result, then if they can see it and go, oh, that looks great. And we are out of 